Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. So far we have seen placement related concepts and commands. Then we also saw cell density and pin density maps also. Then we understood how the cell density and pin density can cause the congestion. Now in this video we will be learning about global routing congestion. Previously we have seen that if cell or pin density is high, it can be visually seen to such kind of heat maps. Also if congestion is coming, then tool will calculate the congestion in certain way and generate the heat map for the same which will look something like this. In this map if you observe, then green portion means lesser congestion compared to red portion. Red portion of the map generally indicates congestion is there. Now let us understand how it is being calculated. We take example of this kind of placement. Then let us assume timing effort is high and tool has done congestion aware timing driven placement. If a placement is created by tool using such kind of recipe, it means tool is putting effort in converging the timing. And while doing so, it has also put the effort in calculating the routability of nets so that we should not face congestion also at a later stage. And nowadays compilers are so advanced that already it is configured by the companies to use this kind of recipe. Now the question is how tool decides the congestion. Let us try to understand the concept through an example. Let us say this design is divided by the tool in this shape of G cell. So for each G cell it will see how many cells are there and after that for each cell it will try to calculate how many number of nets are there. So total number of nets which are going through in this particular G cell it will see. So total number of nets it will try to calculate and after that it, once it has calculated it knows now how many nets will be passing through this and now it will see how many metal layers are there and based on each metal layer. So let's say if you have six metal layers. So if you have metal layers count as your six. In this case, what will happen is you will have horizontal three and vertical three layers. Let us assume that your M1 is horizontal. So your M2 will be vertical and then M3 will be horizontal. M4 will be vertical and M5 will be horizontal and M6 will be vertical. These are your horizontal metal layers and these will be vertical metal layers. So let's say there are 25 nets which are going in total in this particular cell G cell. So let's say out of that 25, let's say you have in this direction that is vertical direction. So vertical means you have M2, M4 and M6 in this direction like this and your routes will be going in horizontal direction like this. So M1, M3 and M5 will be going like this. And let's say out of this 25 nets which are going through this particular G cell, you have 8 nets going in horizontal and you have 17 nets going in vertical net, vertical direction. In placement stage while doing the global routing, tool would have assigned the layers to different nets. So how the layer assignment for different nets would have done in the placement is, let's say you have 7 nets in M2 and let's say 6 nets in M4 and you have let's say a, around 4 nets in M6. So this is your layer assignment that has happened in the placement stage. Now please note that this is what is done by the tool while doing the layer assignment. So we can say that this is what tool is demanding. So our demand of nets is that we should have 7 nets in M2, 4, 6 nets in M4 and 4 nets in M6. This is our demand for a perfect routing without any shorts or any issues. But let's say that supply is different. So let's say supply we mention like this. So let's say if you have supply of 4 nets in M2 and 3 nets in M4 and 3 nets in M6. So if you have supply like this and demand like in white color and supply in your green color in that case what will happen is you can see that the nets are actually having more demand than the supply and you will have an overflow. So overflow means you have demand minus supply. How much tool is supplying and how much you are demanding based on that you get your overflow. And in this particular case let's say in M2 if we see it is 7 minus 4 you have you have uh, you have 
overflow of plus 3 if you see for m4 it is overflow of plus 3 and in m6 you have overflow of plus 1 and you have total overflow of total overflow of 7 so if you see how the tool will mention is in the heat map like this that you have 17 demand but supply of 10 and overflow of 7 like this higher overflow means it will result in higher routing congestion and we should avoid it that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos and we hope that you like the content please do like share and subscribe to the channel thank you